Hello, this is an assessment of a Steinway Upright Piano Model K, just come into stock, 133 centimetres high and made in 2008. Now it's got about five centimetres extra leg room for tall people and uh, the pedals, as you can see, uh, show that the piano's hardly been used. They haven't even taken the original plastic off them. Now the casework and the keys are absolutely immaculate. This is a German Steinway. Um, we're really fortunate to get hold of it because there are very few on the second-hand market. And this one literally hasn't been used. You can just about see the indentations of the hammers there, but there's uh, sort of 99.9% .9 hammer left, so uh, plenty of life in it. It hasn't been used for since the client who I bought it from said he hadn't used it and hadn't had it tuned since he bought it. And uh, it's actually... If you listen to that note, it's uh, approximately 10 beats flat. If I play, uh, actually another factor is that the dampers are not pulling off. I really don't know why the dampers shouldn't be pulling off. Um, it's just, uh, we'll have a look at the, the adjustment on that. It's just a very simple adjustment screw on the pedal here. And turning that, we'll be able to get the dampers coming off as they should be. Uh, just two and a half turns on the uh, screw and we find the dampers are now coming off. Uh, we like to have uh, plenty of clearance here, so that they're definitely clearing the strings, these wedge dampers, and uh, perhaps just slightly more than uh, we need so that after a five or ten years' time the dampers are still lifting off as well as they possibly can. I mentioned that the piano is very flat. It's actually about 10 beats flat, so that's the A440. We'll play the piano next to it and compare it. And you can hear the beating there. Uh, that's about 10 beats flat, which is remarkable. And the piano, as I say, hadn't been tuned since the client bought it, so it's made in 2008. As well as the piano serial number, there's also a number written on the frame at the bottom here, near the pedals. 419109. I don't know what that number is. I'd be very grateful if some you guys know and could let me know. Another thing we'd like to correct is that the, the keys, uh, sorry, when you press the key, the hammer is almost double hitting on the string. Now, it's not wrong for it to bounce sl slightly when you play very quietly. It's the same on a grand piano. Um, it doesn't come back to the, cat, to the check uh, at all, this one though. So uh, we just need it to. That one's coming back to the check and checking, but uh, it's a bit too close for comfort. So I need to do something about that. It's nice that it sets off as late as possible, and that's uh, clearly regulated in that way, but we'd like a bit more positive feel. Uh, one thing we very often do, and the technical department will decide what to do here, but um, we c that's, that's 11 millimeter key dip measurement, and um, we can make that, as you see, it's not 11 millimeters, it's less. It's about 10, I think. Um, not uncommon for Stymie to be 10, but I'd like it 10 and a half at least. And that, that because of the key do goes down more, the, the hammer will check more positively. So I've increased the key dip by half a millimeter by taking this, this card out here. And now let's see, see what it feels like. So that's made all the difference. Now, it's much more responsive. If we play really quietly, we might get it to... No, even now it's checking nicely. It's checking means it's catching on the on the check here. So you can see on see it catching. If you play it really quietly, it's not wrong that it doesn't catch, but it's wrong that it hits the string twice. So we want to get it as close as possible. And the, I've done C sharp as well. Um, again, it's checking very nicely and getting as close as possible before it comes back to the check. Now, apart from needing re that regulation, that I'd like to do. It does sound wonderful. It, everything about the piano is perfect. So we listen to that bass, as you'd expect. As good as you can get on a modern upright. Listen to the break point. I can hardly tell which, where the break point is. And they've matched it in nicely with the extra copper strings there on that side. So that's beautiful. And going right up. It's very out of tune at the moment for what it should be. Um, but the octaves are well in tune if we play an octave. Even after all those years, that's a sign of a good piano, as I've mentioned on other videos too. And the dampers, let's look at the regulation on those. So as we watch the damper, look, press those two hammers together and the dampers move exactly together. And let's try two others. So this is uh, E and F and again. So that's brilliantly regulated. Of course, you'd expect it from a high quality Steinway. So I'm not quite sure why uh, the, the checking wasn't, wasn't happening here, but anyway, we can correct it and we'll guarantee it for 10 years.
Just for comparison, I thought I'd show you this Steinway Model V upright, which we're restoring. This is a 1930s piano, and uh, it's in the polishing room. Uh, we're just finishing off the polishing. That's 70 hours work of polishing, actually. It's um, about 30 coats of French polish and then finished off by uh, antique waxing. Uh, but uh, this piano has a very different sound to it. We're actually changing the hammers, but we're keeping the action. It's so, it's so well regulated already, and we're also f touching it up a bit, but the hammers are a bit weak, so we're going to change those. The strings are wonderful, and it would only make them worse if we changed them. I, normally, the Steinway strings are so good. Listen to the rich bass here. As long as the tuning pins are tight, which they are, then it's, it's better to keep the old strings. If you have to change them, well, you have to change them, but the, the tone of the strings is so wonderful. We're missing hammers there because we're actually down there. We're replacing uh, all the hammer felt, and so we sent these off as, as an example, and uh, they're, being, they're currently being bored by, by Renner for us. So it's just a different tone, uh, very, very warm. And the action will be excellent when it's finished as well. Diff slightly different feel to it, but uh, wonderful to play. Uh, by the way, for technicians, this, this has got the ordinary flange of a modern piano. In the 30s, um, they start, uh, you have to be careful because you can easily get an X flange. Um, we're used to working with X flanges, but anything before 1930 tends to have the, uh, sorry, H flange, I'm saying the wrong thing. Uh, the flange goes across there. I've got another video that shows the difference, but because we've got the hammers off, you can see this flange very clearly. So that's an assessment of a German Steinway Model K made in 2008 and it's just come into stock and there's quite a lot of work to do on it but it's got everything to make it a perfect piano. The touch is slightly heavier than I would like and I think it's about 52 grams instead of 5150. You may not think that's very significant. Uh, by the way the upright is nice, it's about 30 grams which gives it a good a sense of resistance. Uh, a really musician's piano very much so. I think if we lubricate uh, with dry lubricant in the centre rail, as mentioned in other videos, that's with talc, which is official sort of industrial lubricant for dry lubrication, uh, then I think that's going to make all the difference. It's not that much of a difference we need to make. Uh, I don't think we really need to do any reweighting. The technical team will decide what needs doing. At the moment as well, it needs voicing, and it's very flat. So um, I don't know if we'll have time to make a video when it's finished, but um, if you're interested in this piano, 10 year guarantee. Um, I will also visit you uh, when you buy the piano if you're in the UK, just to double check it in your house. It's important to keep it in the right kind of environment, but a, a modern Steinway uh, is usually very stable in most environments, but uh, humidity and obviously is very important, not too hot. So don't you want a temperature of 22 degrees absolute maximum and ideally 20 degrees on average and, um, and also you want the humidity above really 45% and uh, not too much, not too often above 60% and that will keep it very stable, the tuning will be stable, this tuning is stable so that means it's been kept in a good environment otherwise you find the tuning, the octaves round here have gone way out of the environment, it's not been good the octaves generally won't be in tune, but for not having been tuned for perhaps 10 years, this is uh, remarkably in tune. The unison's a little bit out, but not terribly. It's just a mark of an extremely well-made piano. It doesn't feel very pleasant to play at the moment, as it should do. Well, it's good, obviously, but um, the key dip is, to me, a bit shallow. Thank you very much for listening.